The New York Knicks found a way to make it a close game versus the Detroit Pistons. But in the end, they found a way to win with sheer just juice, man. They gave it everything they absolutely could. We will get to all of the information from last night's game, but the focus of today's video is I want to talk about kind of some injury rumors that are surrounding this basketball team. Did ESPN leak the return date for Julius Randle in OG Ananobi? As we know, Ananobi continues to battle back after having elbow surgery. He is expected to be reevaluated by doctors at the end of the month. Julius Randle, surgery has not been ruled off the table, and there has not been a timetable set for him. But I was sent two photos earlier today, and these photos, they come from the ESPN Fantasy Sports app. And it is someone that has Julius Randle on their fantasy basketball team. You see his position rank. You see how many average points he has, how many minutes. You see that they could drop him. But you see over here that it says he's out. And it says he has an estimated return date of March 3rd. Okay, nobody is given a return date for Julius Randle. Um, and then I went and looked at OG and Obi. Someone sent me this picture. And it was the same exact thing. A return date on March 3rd. So I'm like, okay, we got a return date for Rando on March 3rd. We got a return date on OG and Obi on March 3rd. What the heck is March 3rd? And then I went and looked. It is a Sunday, and at 7 p.m., the New York Knicks play the Cleveland Cavaliers. I am not saying that those return dates are true for Julius Randle. I just think it is interesting that they have that. I will say this. March 3rd makes some sense for OG and Obi. Would it be a little bit early? Yes, because he's not expected to be reevaluated by doctors until the end of the week. And I don't think after being evaluated on March 1st, he's going to be ready to play March 3rd. And I don't think that March 3rd is actually all that likely for Julius Randle. But throughout the weekend, and again today, and prior to the game against the Boston Celtics, we saw Julius Randle putting in work on the basketball court. Here he is getting in work with their assistant coach. We saw him in that leaked video where at the NBA Players Association gym, Randall was in the background of someone's video getting up shots. I believe Randall is going to return this season. And this is what Woj said about him. We did a video about this on the channel. You can check that out. But I just wanted to give a full injury update. Woj said this about Randall. There's not full clarity yet on this. Last season, he had the ankle injury. And there was a lot of suggestions to have that surgery during the season. Randall did not do that. He wanted to play. His inclinations to play even hurt. That was his goal. And it's also his goal right now. He wants to put anything off, surgery-wise, with his shoulder till the offseason. But that's still fluid. That's not been fully decided. The concern this season about not, there is concern about this season, not just getting him back healthy, but how effective he could be playing with that injured right shoulder. He also said that OG is right on schedule. They'll reevaluate him at the end of next week. This was last week. And the hope is he starts to get back on the court then. I also thought it was very interesting that Adrian Wojnarowski said that Julius Randle is going to have to play through pain no matter what happens and how he comes back. So Randall, um, I think it will take him longer to get back out on the court than Ananobi. I do think the beginning of March, though, is a target date for Ananobi to get back. And after having to watch the New York Knicks claw their way to victory against the Detroit Pistons, they need to get healthy. They need. If you want Randall and OG to get healthy, hit that thumbs up icon. If you're watching this video, you better hit the thumbs up icon. Don't jinx it. Don't be the loser. It doesn't hit the thumbs up icon and doesn't wish Randall and OG a speedy recovery. Do that right now for me. We'll get to more thoughts, stats, and updates and highlights about the Knicks first Pistons. But first, I got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. And they'll match your first deposit up to $100. Prize Picks says daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. Lucky for me, I had a winning lineup last night. I selected more on points, rebounds, and assists for Boyan 
cash. I also selected more on points and rebounds for Quentin Grimes, and that was cashed as well since he has 14. If I want some big-time cheddar last night. You could do the same at prizepicks.com slash CLNS, promo code CLNS. And if you put 100 bucks in your account with the promo code CLNS, I'll match your first deposit up to $100. Shout-out to Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. Check them out. Link is in the description. Josh Hart, man. Um, man, that guy is, he's hot, he's cold, he's up, he's down. You love him, you hate him. But honestly, last couple of weeks, he's been playing his best basketball this year. And it's the confidence that I'm starting to see in his shot taking and shot making ability. But when the game was on the line, he, he made the game winning bucket. Did he miss two out of three free throws? Yeah, we got to fix that. But you don't win that game and you're not in that spot unless it was for Hart. Also, the possession prior to uh, Helter Skelter possession, Josh Hart gets a big stop on Cade Cunningham. Played great defense on him, made him work, and uh, Nick's eventually got a stop. Jalen Brunson, 35-12. and 12. Great raw numbers. But by his standards, um, I think it's safe to say he didn't play all that well, man especially in the second half. Less than 43% from the field. That is not good for Jalen Brunson. Three of 11 from three. That is not good for Jalen Brunson. He had 12 assists. Awesome stuff there. But he had four turnovers. He needs to tighten it up. I don't want to say I feel like Jalen Brunson is starting to listen to the people when they tell him how good he is. But I feel like he played hero ball against the Detroit Pistons last night. He wanted to hit that dagger three. Way too many bad shots in that last 90 seconds. And he kind of got locked up by Evan Fournier. And after a couple possessions of that, he had a run out fast break layup where he had to do a slow one-two to create separation. And then after that, he's celebrating and talking shit. It's like, bro, it is a one-point game versus the Pistons in the fourth. And you're part of the reason it's close. Maybe I'm reading into things too much. Get back to playing to the guy that no one believed in. Get back to being the guy that has a bag of chips on his shoulder. Come on. We need you. We're not going anywhere without you. We really, really need you. Dante DiVincenzo was awesome. Had that really, really bad turnover. Really bad turnover at the end. What did he do? He got right on the floor after that, and he got a steal. Never quit. Never say die in this team's DNA, and it comes from guys like Dante and Josh Hart and Isaiah Hartenstein, Jericho Sims, Presta Chua, and Deuce McBride. Dante played good. He really, really, he really, really did. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for informative Knicks content every single day. So sub for New York Knicks dubs. And if you are subscribed, type real one down below. I thought the New York Knicks got good minutes from Boyan Bogdanovich. Had 13 points, six rebounds, able to shoot 45% from the field, knocked three threes on eight attempts. I'd like to see that closer to 50%, but I'll take 37.5% any day of the week. I'd like to see him play more minutes, though. Only 21 minutes for Bogdanovich tonight. Um, need to see a little bit. I, I want to see him play a little bit more, but he was able to score the basketball when the Knicks needed him to uh, in that third quarter. Alec Burks. He's been terrible. He has been terrible since joining this team. Um, he's been inefficient. He has not given them any sort of backcourt guard that they can depend on when Brunson's out of the game, and he is taking horrible shots. Um, the Knicks simply need Alec Burks to be better. He is hurting them. Isaiah Hardenstein continues to try to play through that Achilles injury. Just 21, 26 minutes for him tonight. Um, most of Impressive thing to him about me is just the effort he consistently has. What was it, one of the last plays in the fourth quarter? Cunningham throws up that backside lob to Jalen Duren, one of the highest jumpers in this league. And Hardenstein meets him at the rim to get the block to give the Knicks the ball and keep them in this ball game. That was a big time block and defensive play by Hardenstein. I thought he played good overall. He needs to continue to try to get healthy. I thought Jericho Sims gave you good minutes when he came in. Try to look at the score sheet, and you're like, 2.6 rebounds, 2 assists, not really. But I thought it just gave you good energy. Uh, looking at his stats here, he had four offensive rebounds. 
four offensive rebounds for Jericho Sims tonight. Thought he played pretty well. Um, Achua, 11 boards, two steals, two blocks. Thought he played well as well. Um, way too close to the game. I know a win is a win, and we uh, are all, all we're doing is chasing wins, but you don't ever want this to happen. Nick's got lucky. They got lucky. Grade the performance, A, B, C, D, or F. I would say the Knicks played their D game today, and they still found a way to win. Make sure you are following me over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I'm tweeting about the Knicks all day, every day. It's another way you could stay up to date on everything orange and blue. Subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on. Hit the thumbs up icon. We'll see you later.